I'm in the process of making a music video and I thought I'd show a little bit of, the, of how to start the storyboarding process for a music vid. So what I'm actually looking at here is the script. The scene I'm going to be planning out is it starts in the desert. And this isn't even the beginning of the music video. Um, so you don't have to start translating a script from the very beginning. You can just start from whatever scene you feel in inspired to or you have shot ideas for. But basically to break down the shots, what I like to do is normally dedicate uh, at least one storyboard per line or per main idea. And anytime there's a conjunction, that means there'll be another board. So like anytime there's an and in the sentence, that normally means you'd need a second board to describe the rest of that sentence. But I was kind of having uh, some artist block, if you want to call it that. So my girlfriend actually started some of these boards. And this is actually thumbnails. These aren't storyboards. So um, so the, main, the beginning is we see our main six heroes. They ride in the desert in their space cars. Unusual sand mountains in the form of various abstract forms complicate the path. So that's what I'm focusing on right now. And I haven't really uh, created the space cars yet. So basically these circle shapes are just placeholders for where the vehicles will go. So you don't have to have all of your character designs and all of your locations fully fleshed out before you start thumbnailing. Because at the thumbnail stage, the main thing is is figuring out the compositions, where things will go, and also the shot flow. And by shot flow, I mean the sequential order of things, like one, two, three. These are shown in order, so you want to make sure that the way things are moving, um, it follows a logical screen direction. You aren't going to confuse the viewer once you start animating things. So. This process saves a lot of time of making sure that all the compositions are laid in stone and working well at this smaller size before like just going straight in. Um, so these space cars, they're entering the desert now. They're leaving this uh, kind of city area. Kind of looks like a mountain. Make it look more like a city. And um, so, yeah, over here, there's like s sand trailing behind them. I think they're these spaceship type things are gonna be kind of like hover pods, like, you know, like the uh, futuristic dystopian type thing. All right, so then heroes go around sandy whirlpools. Those are gonna be blown up later and I'm gonna refine them and add more like camera instructions and uh, all these like little circular spaceships will be tightened up and have the appropriate characters showing. Um, and then the storyboards themselves, what I always do is actually just turn them into layout drawings. So I'll, I'll blow the storyboard up full screen size and trace over the key frames of the characters and the backgrounds. Sketches in the storyboard will often be, be traced over for official background art, so it saves an extra step, saves some time. So then heroes go around the whirlpools, explosions from underground. So, okay, so the characters are going this way. It also uh, can be a little helpful to to draw like a loose uh, perspective grid just to make sure you know things are working properly so I'm gonna kind of have this at a tilt um, tilts can help add dynamic energy to action scenes and also add some tension so this 
this um, spaceship is is gonna go over this whirlpool or wait, explosions from underground. I guess it doesn't have to be the whirlpool, but basically um, there's an explosion right here. Boom. Then, so that was the car that was leading the race. And then this guy will pass over and we'll have the, the uh, explosion trailing in the background. Let's see here. Over here, I want these in the distance. There's thousands of racers, but in the distance, we're gonna have the, the cars uh, coming this way. So these whirlpools are gonna be really, really big. Okay. So another thing to keep in mind is the 180 rule where, I'll just draw it really quick over here. Um, like say, say this is a person and there's a person over here staring at them or they're talking whatever kind of human interaction-y things humans do, have them waving. Uh, this, this line right here, this action line between their eyesight, this is the axis. You don't wanna cross over this line um, immediately, like from, a, from one cut to another. Now you can have the camera move around and it never cut and viewers won't get confused like if you if the camera was looking at them from over here and it moved over here without cutting we wouldn't be disoriented but if you just uh, cut from this character from the bottom right uh, and just swapped the two to where now it's this character with the hair and this character if you just cut in between these two shots without showing how you logically got from each place it would look like they're popping it would look like an error now this can be an artistic choice but it can also it's normally a you know a mistake it destroys continuity um so Um, let's see here. So yeah, keeping that in mind, uh, I'll just pretend this is the axis line of this. Just pretend that this is the camera looking at them. So I'm gonna move the camera over here and try to imagine what that would look like. So the explosion would be here, tracking backwards and I'll just give this this car right here um, like a triangle on his head so I can keep track of what what's what so now we have the triangle car tracking forward so that's that is coming up also, uh, another thing about like horizon lines is it's generally more interesting uh, not to have your horizon line right in the very middle. So, because that's just, there's no conf conflict. It's like a story. If there's no conflict, it's not interesting. It's, it, it's all about contrast. And conflict and contrast are kind of philosophically intertwined. So, the horizon line down here is more you know more more contrast from you know the negative space versus the positive space just it's more interesting type shapes for the eye to absorb um all right i better save this before i do something and then so explosions from underground i'm being uh since there's no dialogue in this, like normally if there's dialogue, you know, sometimes you'll write underneath here some 
words to keep track of what's what. But for right now, I'm just, just trying to get just some raw material out onto the page. And then later on, this, like I said in the storyboard phase, I'll refine this, look for any errors. Also, maybe test out a few different thumbnails. But right now, really, it's just a matter of getting this information translated into shots. And then, so explosions from underground, red pillars of lava flies up like a fountain, forming huge pillars of hot earth magma. Okay. So now, oh, another thing, like if a shot's coming in, uh, if something's coming towards the screen and it's centered, then the continuity is neutral or the 180 degree ang rule is neutralized. So what that means is this is a neutral shot. So I could cut to down here, either the character going this way, or he could be going this way or any way and we wouldn't lose continuity. Because something coming in or away from the camera, unless there's a, like other landmarks that would clearly show, you know, like if he's like for instance if if like he was moving away from the city oh yeah he is moving away from the city maybe I should show that show the city slowly falling down behind him or maybe that happens over here let's see here oh wait no the city's over here yeah the city down here so we'll have the city like a huge fortress a sprawling metropolis over here and we'll have um, the city will be sinking it'll be shrinking underneath the horizon line these are just like little shorthand arrows for myself and then so it'll be sinking it's going this way hmm. so we'll have the Spaceships are gonna be coming this way and then cut around and turn this way. So, and then back here is the city even smaller in the distance, fading away. All right, so we don't need the city there. Oh, right, there's unusual sand mountains, that's what's behind them. So we'll have these abstract kind of uh, Mobius inspired type m mountainous pillars fly up like a fountain forming huge pillars of hot earth magma. So red lava flies up. Uh, okay. So over here. This uh, is the main character. Again, he might not have like a triangle shape on his head, but he's the sixth sense character. He's in the lead of the race. Uh, but we're gonna cut here to some some lava type shapes shooting up from the earth. kind of envision like yellow bands swirling around now normally like at the thumbnail stage you don't have to color anything but sometimes adding little coloring uh, guidelines will will help and also you know it's these drawings are not very articulate right now, so color can help distinguish what you're seeing. Make it less like just little scribbles. But I won't color the rest of these lava pillars from now on. This is just establishing that that's what that is. Now we'll be going straight in to this 
world of lava pillars. There are all these different cars or vehicles. And the pillars are going to be shooting up and tracking behind them. Maybe this one is in the foreground. That's another thing. Uh, at the thumbnail stage, you want to make sure you're getting some, conveying some depth, experimenting with putting stuff in the foreground. And of course, the things in the background will be smaller. So you can already kind of establish a sense of scale. Have these pillars. So, this lead character, let's see here. I guess he's right here. Um, there's a character behind them who's going to try to destroy him. And so. All, but all these uh, vehicles are going to be dodging the pillars. So we'll have the little arrow to show that uh, this pillars of lava is shooting up, but he dodges it. These are kind of like ideas for key frames for myself. Um, I'll just actually write numbers so I can. So he's going to start out here, 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 and there. I'm going to draw just a bunch of these pillars just dancing around. And our main heroes are going to be swooping around them gracefully. Well, actually kind of like a swarm of bees it's going to be chaotic so I want to have characters kind of I'll even write that a little note swarm of bees then parentheses dodging and again I'll refine all these at the storyboard stage um, and some some of the some of the things are going to be hitting the pillars, so we'll have some explosions going on. Some of the vehicles are getting destroyed. This is a race of thousands of vehicles, but there's six main characters based off of human senses. Well, five senses and then the sixth sense is intuition. So everyone is going around lava pillars at high speed. At the end of the scene, we show smell. This hero is trying to bring down the sixth sense hero, but he slows down and the hero reflecting sense falls into the lava column. Okay. So, I'm gonna have smell catching up to the our main triangle character who's been in the lead this whole time. We'll have a close-up of the main character. And then we'll have smell coming up here and we'll see the main character will notice it. see what are we gonna do for smell maybe he'll have kind of like that's like a pig nose kind of so smell is catching up this is gonna be an overhead shot showing the two I actually want smell to be a little bigger so that's smell main hero and he's gonna bump 
bump into him and run him off the screen, run our main character off the screen. Alright, I'm just going to draw some uh, lines here to show like the sand underneath them is going. But uh, after Piggy, I'll just call Smell Piggy, bumps into our main character, the triangle, and then we'll show, um, we'll show the character inside the spaceship, like hitting, hitting against stuff. And then we'll cut to the inside of Piggy's spaceship and he's looking over laughing at uh, the main character skidding out of control over here in the corner. He'll be chuckling to himself. And uh, he's got like an eye patch on. And I did draw some character designs, but I can't, uh, not really, I'm just doing it fast right here, but. Oh, this right, laughing. I need to make that a little more obvious. And so then he's going to turn his head back around. We'll, we'll cut to this type of view. And his head's going to turn around. And we're going to see lava starting to shoot up from the ground and then we're going to cut to his reaction actually hang on a second so he's laughing no he doesn't turn around his head around yet he's still laughing and then then lava's coming up and then we see his Head turn around, and his reaction's gonna turn to shock. And we'll see the lava rising more, and he's gonna push on the brakes. try to slow down we'll have all this all this sand storm flying behind him as the lava is coming up more and more like a giant wave and this is where the scene's gonna end after he explodes into the lava. It's just a giant wall of lava here. And basically, that's, uh, it's gonna, ah, having trouble talking and doing this at the same time. So, this is the lava shooting up. And then, he comes from off screen here, and he's gonna splat like a fly against the window. And he'll explode. And then we'll cut to um, his explosion is gonna overtake the whole screen and this will be a transition 
we'll use this explosion as a transition to the next cut. So it's going to fill the whole screen. And then out of his explosion, the flames are going to rise. And we're going to see the hero riding towards the camera through the flames. And he's going to have... He's going to have a smirk on his face. And then this is how we'll cut to the next scene. I don't know if they'll have a steering wheel, but this is just about story ideas. So then from this right here is how we'll cut to the next scene. But yeah, this is how I'm turning this script into a storyboard. Well, thumbnails right now, but 